Now today we will be seeing the topic regarding the stomach and as usual in the stomach we will be starting with the development of the stomach, the anatomy and physiology part of the stomach which is of prime importance and then we will move on to the most important disease that is the peptic ulcer and the gastric carcinomas. Now regarding the development of the stomach, the stomach starts to develop in the fifth week of gestation in form of the tubular embryonic foregut. Now this tubular embryonic foregut which starts in the fifth week slowly ascends up and then rotates. So a small rotation occurs. So a 90 degree clockwise rotation around the longitudinal axis is seen in the stomach. This 90 degrees rotation makes the left side to face anteriorly and the right side to face posteriorly. So this is how the stomach rotates 90 degrees. Left side becomes anterior and the right side becomes posterior with a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. Now the significance of this rotation is all the structures which are present anteriorly and posteriorly. The anterior structures are mainly of the left side and the posterior structures mainly are on the right side. Similarly, we have the most important relation that is regarding to the vagus nerve where the left vagus which is present running through the thorax becomes the anterior vagus and the right vagus becomes the posterior vagus. So this is of prime importance while doing vagotomy. So you need to know about the vagus location. Next coming to the layers of the stomach. As usual we have the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis and serosa. The mucosa again consists of the epithelium, the lamina propria and the muscularis mucosa. And the important part of this stomach layers is there are three layers of muscles. We generally have in the entire GIT outer longitudinal and inner circular muscles. But here in the stomach we have one more extra layer that is the middle circular layer which is thickened at the parts of the pyloric sphincter. So the pyloric sphincter is mainly formed because of the thickening of the middle circular layer. So the muscular layer consists of three layers in stomach that is what you need to remember. Next important is the blood supply of the stomach. The blood supply of the stomach has got mainly three arteries and the branches of the three arteries are important. The first artery which is arising mainly from the celiac trunk. So you know that the celiac trunk is the blood supply which supplies to the foregut. So the artery of the foregut is the celiac trunk. The artery of the midgut is the superior mesenteric artery and the artery of the hindgut is the inferior mesenteric artery. Now the celiac trunk gives rise to three branches mainly the first branch is the left gastric artery which again divides into esophageal branches and small gastric branches. So the left gastric artery is the first branch. The second branch is the splenic artery which gives rise to three branches the short gastric arteries, the left gastroepiploic artery and artery to the pancreas. So splenic artery is the second branch which gives three branches short gastrics, left gastroepiploic artery and the pancreatic branches. Now the third branch is the common hepatic artery. It gives three branches. The right gastric artery, the gastroduodenal artery which again divides into right gastroepiploic artery and superior pancreatico duodenal artery and the last continuation terms is the hepatic artery proper which again divides into right hepatic artery and left hepatic artery. Now the cystic artery which is a branch of right hepatic artery is the artery that supplies to the gallbladder. So remember the four branches of the third branch. So let us revise the celiac trunks give three branches. Left gastric artery is the first branch which gives two branches the esophageal branches and the gastric branches. Splenic artery is the second branch which gives three branches short gastric arteries, 
left gastroepiploic artery and pancreatic branches and the third branch is the common hepatic artery which gives three branches the right gastric artery the gastroduodenal artery which in turn divides into two branches that is the right gastroepiploic artery and the superior pancreatic duodenal artery and it continues as the hepatic artery proper and gives rise to left hepatic artery and right hepatic artery and cystic artery is a branch of right hepatic artery now the largest artery to the stomach is the left gastric artery which is a direct branch from the celiac artery and one of the important point which you need to remember is the aberrant artery the most common aberration in the anomaly of the artery is the left hepatic artery arising from the left gastric artery so this is the most common aberration in the arterial supply of the stomach now let us see the venous supply or the venous drainage the left gastric and the right gastric veins they mainly drain into portal vein the right gastroepiploic vein it drains into the superior mesenteric vein and the left gastroepiploic vein it drains into splenic vein so this is regarding the venous drainage and the lymphatic drainage of the stomach is mainly into four groups of lymph nodes the superior group of lymph nodes mainly present at the cardiac junction superior group of gastric lymph nodes next we have the sub pyloric group of lymph nodes next we have supra pyloric group of lymph nodes and then later we have the pancreatic lineal group of lymph nodes so these are the four important group of lymph nodes two are present on the right side and two are present on the left side these are the four quadrants these drain the four quadrants of the stomach these are the four group of lymph nodes which drain the lymphatics now regarding the nerve supply vagus is the most important thing which causes the nerve supply and we have the celiac plexus mainly the greatest planktonic nerves from t5 to t10 they form the major majority of the nerve supply now vagus is 80% sensory and 20% motor function which mainly helps for the motility and secretions in the stomach so the most important is regarding the vagus now this vagus is of two parts the left vagus and the right vagus the left vagus is also called as the anterior vagus and the right vagus is also called the posterior vagus now the branches of the left vagus are important we have four branches the hepatic branch the anterior latargic branch the crow foot at the distal most part and the seromuscular branches the posterior vagus also the right vagus has also got four branches the branch first branch is called as the criminal nerve of grassi which is given at a very high position and is liable for escaping during vagotomy that is why it is called as a criminal so the criminal nerve of grassi the celiac branch the posterior latargic and the seromuscular branch so these are the branches of the vagus and these are of paramount importance while doing vagotomy and you all know that the left vagus is anterior and the right vagus is posterior now let us see some of the cells which mainly contribute for the secretions of the stomach the cells and their locations are important the parietal cell or auxentic cell they are located in the body and are mainly helpful for the acid and intrinsic factor secretion remember the parietal cell or the auxentic cell secretion of acid and intrinsic factor next we have the chief cells which mainly secrete pepsin the other cells are the g cells and the d cells the g cells and d cells are present mainly in the antrum the g cells are the cells which secrete gastrin and the d cells are the cells which secrete somatostatin so remember parietal cells and chief cells are present in the body the g cells and d cells are present in the antrum 
and there are no parietal cells or literally very less parietal cells in the antrum or cardia. They are mainly present in the body.